May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Not only are we happy to see this crew from Emmanuel, we're here, we're also happy to see Bill Tomlinson, in case those of you who do not know him. Bill is a parishioner at All Saints Winter Park and is stepping in now to provide music for us for the Thursday communion services, for which we are very grateful. Thank you very much, Bill. You're welcome. Today, besides confirmation, we're honoring the life of Anthony Abbott, Egyptian. And um, as many of you know, the Christian life in Egypt is very close to my heart. I've been there. Uh, Munir and Nice, who is the presiding bishop for the Gulf area, is a, and his wife are good friends. And so, I, uh, in thinking about them today, I'm particularly thinking about actually the plight of Christians in Egypt as Egypt becomes more and more intentionally Islamic and what that will do to the Christian minority, who I understand are fleeing in record numbers from the nation. Anthony takes us back to the middle of the third century. We're talking about a very, very long time ago. Anthony was a, had inherited an extraordinarily large fortune, primarily in lands. His responsibility, not unlike if you watch Downton Abbey, the Duke of Grantham, the Earl of Grantham rather, <laughs> is to basically manage the family estate. That was to be his full-time job. And um, he was the one who had inherited it, the eldest son. He had a younger sister for whom he had responsibility. And yet he was entirely dissatisfied with his lot in life. Uh, there'd be plenty of people who would love to trade places with um, the Earl of Grantham, but not so Anthony. And he was, he's been, he was wrestling and praying, and he walked into church. And the gospel that he heard was the very gospel that Christy read to us about, you lack one thing, go sell all that you have, give it to the poor, and come follow me. And Anthony heard that as a direct word from God to him. And that's precisely what he did. He saved enough of his inheritance to make sure that his sister was well provided for for the rest of her life. He sold everything else, which was an extraordinary amount of land and money, gave it all away, uh, began to live with a small group of hermits, trying to, in essence, figure out what God's plan was for his life. Okay, God, what do I do now, now that I have physically nothing? And the story goes, uh, often told, that a part of what happened to him, the second thing for which he is famous, the first was the gospel and his response to it, was that he entered into a time of what he described as severe demonic temptation. Uh, the temptation of Anthony is a huge theme uh, in Christian art that's really gone through even into the 20th century with Salvador Dali being the latest to have done a portrait or a picture of what he imagined that would actually look like. They are grotesque pictures. Um, and, and so it is in that light that we get the epistle reading, which is all about resisting the temptations of the evil one. And it is there that I want to take a little bit of time, because it's a worthwhile text. Um, you need to know, of course, the context for Peter writing is actually Christian persecution. He has already been talking to them about the fact that they are suffering for their faith. Um, and so he says to them, and this is just prior to where this passage picks up, he's giving instructions primarily to leaders, and then he goes, and all of you, in other words, everybody who's reading this letter, must clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another for, and then the Old Testament is quoted, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And then he says, where we pick up, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty of God, hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. One would think that times of difficulty would produce the kind of humility that would cause us to seek God in new ways. 
and to, in essence, humble ourselves, which is, in fact, the command that we're hearing in the scripture this morning. But actually, that's not often the case. What happens in many to others is because they feel that they are under attack. Instead of humbling themselves to God, what they, in fact, is clothe, sort of close in on themselves. They get extraordinarily resistant, uh, not just to God, who may blame, in fact, for their circumstances, but to other people as well. It's a kind of withdrawal. It, it's not unlike the turtle who, 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 under attack, literally comes inside of a shell and waits for it to pass. And that's and what Peter is saying to his people is that's precisely the wrong way to get at this. That in the midst of difficulty, it should, in fact, be an invitation to come actually more deeply into the presence of God and to seek him. Humility has everything to do with, I know that I am in abject need. In other words, humility is the facing of one's need. It's, it's not debasing oneself in the sense of saying I'm worthless. It's in fact instead saying, in the face of all that I know, I do not have the resources to meet that which is in front of me. That's humility. And it is in that light that Peter says, humble yourself, therefore under, under. In other words, I yield to what it is that you're doing, even if I don't understand it, but I need your help to get through it under the mighty hand of God, so that, Peter says, he may exalt you in due time. Now, he doesn't say what that is. In due time actually could be glory, but I am taken up into heaven. It doesn't necessarily mean an escape out of the difficulty of your circumstances, but, it, but because for all of us, the promise of fulfillment can be a promise delayed until we face the very day of eternity. Sometimes we experience miraculous, truly miraculous, miraculous deliverances, but they're episodic. It's not always to be counted upon. Sometimes we bear under it, under the mighty hand of God, doing our best to be faithful in the midst of what is in fact real difficulty, knowing that we are in so doing taking our place with those who inherit the crown of glory that never fades away. That for me is the context of the rest when he says, cast all your anxieties upon him. Because he cares for you. Saying, I know, O oh God, that even in the midst of these difficulties, that does not keep me from the great mercy and promises that you provide for us as your children. Therefore, I give you all of the blocks in my heart, the anxieties that I bear, that would cause me to turn not to you, but to fear, to anger, to anxiousness, to loneliness, and all of the things that difficulty, in fact, invites. It invites, you see, those things. Because even in the midst of difficulty, I affirm the fact that you care for me. And I, and all of who I am, and all I am enduring, is not outside the very care of your hand. Now that requires discipline. To think like that, and to pray like that, and to affirm it. Which is why the next phrase says, discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Because the temptation would be to sink, not to stand, and to keep alert. Anthony is our picture of that. Because even though he gave away all that he had, even though he faced extraordinary temptations, he was in fact a very jolly man. In fact, Athanasius writing his biography said, one cannot walk away from him without rejoicing. That's not what you would expect in the midst of someone who had literally given away all that would be considered earthly delight and faced some of the worst that the supernatural forces of evil could offer. And yet that is his testimony. And it is, in fact, also the testimony of those who, in the midst of difficulty, are going not just stuck, but through. As they begin to experience, even in the midst of difficulty, the very companionship of God. And the promise that says, I will never leave you or forsake you. 
and that nothing can take you out of my hand. So for that, we give thanks for Anthony of the desert and for the echoes of his testimony that we see in the scriptures this morning. Amen. Amen.